So it's time for some more GoPro tips for beginners. Or actually, anybody could probably get something out of these tips. Mr. Black. By the way, welcome to the channel. My name is Danny Black, and there are new people getting their first GoPros all the time. And I want to make sure I cater to everyone because, you know, we're all kind of on this journey together, but, you know, some of us have been on this journey a lot longer than others. If you are new here, thank you so much for being here. And don't be a stranger to the channel. Click that button right there. Links to everything we're talking about, including some really cool GoPro accessories, will be down in the description, plus some coupon codes and a surprise link. You never know what it's gonna be. All right, so let's start with this one. I see a lot of people struggle with this and that's light flicker. And I'm just gonna try to explain this in a nutshell. But when you're filming indoors and you have your lights on, sometimes you get this lighting flicker, kind of like a strobe light or something. And what's happening is that you just have the wrong region set up on your GoPro. Currents in countries like the United States run on a 60 Hertz frequency, whereas like the rest of the world and where I'm at in Australia, we run on 50 Hertz. So in America, they use that video code of NTSC, which is like the 30 frames per second spectrum, you know, 30, 60, 120, et cetera. Whereas the other regions use PAL, which is like the 25 frames per second spectrum, 25, 50, 100, et cetera. So if you are seeing that flicker, you might have the wrong region in here and you can easily change that by just swiping down, going over to your preferences, clicking general, and if you scroll down to anti-flicker, if you're in America, you wanna be on 60 hertz. If you are anywhere else, you wanna be on 50 hertz. If you wanna learn more about this, it's, it's quite interesting, but um, I'll put a link to this guy's video because he actually did a really good job kind of going over it if you wanna learn more. So links down in the description. All right, the next one is kind of a reference to the last five that I did. And on that video, I showed you where you can get the shortcuts and how you can change them. But since that video, I've actually discovered a much easier way to do it. I found out when you just hold down on the shortcuts, it actually brings up that shortcuts list and you can change them just like that. So that's a much easier way to change those shortcuts just to get quicker access to things that you might need to change quickly. And speaking of holding your fingers down on something, uh, that's what the next one is about. And that's the spot meter. So you push your finger down to activate it and you can move this little bracket around until it's at the brightness level that you wanna keep. You can also even go in and manually adjust the EV balance a little bit just to give you a little bit more control. And once it's perfect, you actually click the little brackets and you can lock it in place. And this will actually give you better overall quality on your videos. So why would you even need something like that? Well, if you're doing a long time lapse or a long shot and you have different levels of exposure coming out, like maybe in a time lapse, your clouds are blocking the sun sometimes, you don't want your exposure to be bouncing all over the place, it's really nice to lock that. And that's how you do it. And hey, if you're enjoying this list, if you can click that button right there, that lets me know that you like this kind of stuff and I'll do more of them. Also, if you have tips of your own, please leave them in the comments because you know, that'll help me looking for them or other people reading the comments. That might be a great tip for anyone looking down there. All right, on to the next one. And this one is a super easy one, but people do ask this question a lot. How do you get the SD card out? I'm sorry to laugh at that, but there are new people out there that don't know. And it's a lot more simple than you think. All you do is push in and it kind of pops out and you just pull it out like that. And same when you're inserting it, you put it in the slot and you push it down until it kind of clicks in. But here's another tip to go with that. Uh, if you take this little battery door off and all it is is a simple twist, don't worry, you won't break it. It's just, you twist it. And you can use the top part like that to um, press down and get the SD card out without taking the battery. And then same with inserting it, you put it in there and you use the lid to just push it down into place. And then you pop your lid back on and you're done. And the final tip on today's list is the timer for the screen. People that are new to GoPro freak out because there is a timer on your screen that goes off. If you're recording and it just goes off, they think that it turned off. And they have that timer set on there by default because it helps with overheating issues. But if you wanna change that so you can see your screen continually, you just go into the settings, you hit preferences, you click on displays, and you can see there you have screensaver for the rear, and you can set that screensaver to never, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. Uh, I like three minutes, three minutes is pretty good. And then you can have a screensaver for the front, you can match the rear screen saver or you can do it yourself, but I'll just say match the rear screen. And just below that, you can also adjust the brightness level just in case the screen is too bright or not bright enough. But that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. A lot more products to review and fun videos to make on this channel all the time. I actually have a lot to get to. And also I'm giving away a Hero 9 at 25,000 subscribers. So click on this video. There's still some time and it's easy to enter. Just click on that and uh, watch it. Otherwise, 
<laughs> Stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.